Hello and thank you for watching my video. This is part 3 of chapter 8, IP addressing. Uh, welcome back if you've been watching part 2 and part 1. This is part 3, 8.3 connectivity verification. Okay, ICMPv4 and ICMPv6 messages. ICMP message com common to both ICMP version 4 and version 6 include host confirmation. An ICMP echo message can be used to determine if a host is operational. So if you want to check if destination host is there and operational, you can send an ICMP echo message and you should reply. Uh, you should get ICMP reply message. Destination or service unreachable. When a host or gateway receives a packet that it cannot deliver, it can use an ICMP destination unreachable. Message to notify the source that the destination or service is unreachable. For example, if you send an ICMP message and uh, you get a U, it means that a router is notifying you that the destination is unreachable. Time exceeded. An ICMP version 4 time exceeded message is used by a router to indicate the packet cannot be forwarded because of time to live. The yield of the packet was decremented to zero. Remember time to live field. Every time there's a hop, it reduces one TTL. And uh, when TTL uh, gets to zero, then the packet will be dropped. Root redirection. A router might use the ICMP redirect message to notify the host on a network that a better route is available for a particular destination. So if you send uh, to, to the gateway for the destination, you send the packet and the gateway knows that there's a better way, it will find it will tell you there's a it can be a route redirection. The informational and error messages found in ICMP version 4 are similar to the control and error messages implemented by ICMP version 4. Sorry, uh, the information and error messages found in ICMP v6 are very similar to the control and error messages implemented by ICMP v4. ICMP v6 has new features and improved functionality not found in ICMP v4. ICMP v6 includes four new protocols as part of the neighbor discovery protocol, ND or NDP. First is router solicitation message. When a host is configured to obtain his address information automatically, using stateless address auto configuration or slack it will send a router solicitation message do you remember for the first 64 bit needs that a prefix router advertisement message ra ra messages are sent by router to provide addressing information by host using slack then we have a neighbor solicitation message and neighbor advertisement messages Trace route testing the path. Trace route generates a list of hops that were successfully reached along the path. Provides information verification and troubleshooting information. If the data reaches the destination, then the trace list the interfaces of every router of the path uh, between the path the host in the path between the host. In the data fields, uh, if the data fails at some hop along the way, the address of the last router is at that report. So the trace route can provide an indication on where the problem or security restrictions are found. So trace route will tell you each path as it's going, each hop as the data is, uh, packet is traveling to get to the destination. If at some hop it stops, then the last one that we see, we can start troubleshooting from there. Where, why is it stopping there? Is there some security restriction or if there are some errors? Provides round trip time for each hop along the path to in, and indicates a hop fails to respond. If, for example, if you have a trace route like this, they, it doesn't reach the destination to stop the, that trace route, you press Control Shift plus six to stop the trace route. Okay, now we'll do a demonstration uh, to use a, on using a trace route and a ping command. Okay, for this again, I will be using uh, GNS, but I have expanded our network a little bit now. So uh, we still have PCA, same IP address as we had before. We have router 1, but now I've added router 2, router 3, and PCB. Right, the already configured some of the stuff. Most of the stuff that I have configured is uh, the basic stuff here, the startup configuration, basic startup configuration. Then I have configured router 1, interface uh, serial 01, and created a static route towards router 2. I have configured router 2 with the interface S10 and S11, then created a static route for the both uh, networks. R3, 
interface S11 and uh, I configured uh, interface FA00. It was under FA01, but I actually found out that it's actually under FA00. Okay, so I have tested this before. So if you go to PCA to ping PCB, so from sorry, from this PC, we're gonna go through this link to ping this PC. We send it echo request, and we should receive an echo reply from that PC, and we know the PC is working and active. Okay, so. To see when everything is working fine, let me just open the PCA, open the command prompt, CMD, and ping. First of all, you can do IP config, IP config, and we can see that we have uh, 192.168.11.100, it's our IP address, that's our subnet mask, and that's our gateway, 192.168.11.1. So first, we can ping our gateway, so ping 192.168.11.1. And we can see that we have a reply. We send the uh, echo request and we got echo reply. Now we can ping the PC on the far, far end, PCB, so dot 200. So ping 192.168.12.200. And we have a reply for that as well. Excellent. Now this is when everything is working. If, for example, this is PCB, I open uh, the network properties, the interface properties. So not network and sharing, change adapter, right click, and I'm gonna disable this adapter. Say that it's not working, it's disabled. Now, when I ping that, you'll see that, now we will find out that, okay, well, there is no reply. Okay, request timeout. So here we can try and find out where the problems are starting, where the problems are happening. Um, the one, Ping will just tell us, okay, well, you can't talk to PCB. PCB is not responding. What we can do in the Windows, we can say tracer 192.168.12.200. And trace route, or tracer in, in Windows PC, will tell us the path where, where they're stopping, where the packet is actually stopping. Okay, this is going to go a bit slow. So it means that it did reach our uh, gateway. From our gateway, it's been gone to another router, so which is router 2, 172.16.12.2. And it has received router 3, it has gone, the packet has gone to router 3, 172.16.23.3, and there it's stopping. So when we see this asterisk, we know that, okay, well, there's a problem at router 3, 172.16.23.3, and that's it. So we can start troubleshooting from router 3, that area here. The packet has gone to the gateway. It has gone to the router 2. It's gone to the router 3, but it stopped there. So from this point here, there's a problem here. Okay, we know we have disabled this, so that's the problem. On Windows, to stop this, um, Control C to break this trace search. If you want to continue pinging, so for example, ping 192.168.12.200, say minus T, that will be a contiguous, continuous pinging. Okay, so we're just going to ping it. So let's bring the interface back up. So enable the interface on PCB. After enable it, we go to PCA and we should see some replies now coming back. There we go. That's our replies. Again, to stop this, Control C. If I go to, to the router, now uh, the router configuration, for example, uh, let me clear some of this stuff. I was just testing before. So for example, uh, ping 192.168.12.1. What I'm pinging at the moment is I'm actually pinging this interface here. The 12.1 is this interface here. Okay. So I see exclamation mark, which means everything is working correctly 100%. Okay, so I can do on the router, I can do trace root 192.168.12.1. And I can see the trace worked very well. Everything worked fine. It went to, to router 2, 172.16.12. Then it went to router 3. And that's it. We finished. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the router 3 and disable that interface. So I'm going to go to the fast Ethernet 00 and disable it. So interface, shut it down, I should say. FA00, shut down. Right, so go back to router 1 and uh, ping it again. 
Okay. Now, what we can see here, I didn't want to do the trace route, I wanted to ping, but what I can see at the moment is, is a loop happening, right? Okay, I'll come back to this, I'll tell you, there's a loop. Let's see, let's see if we ping first. So, 192.168.12.1, there's a dot, which means we are not getting anywhere. Okay, so this loop, you can see that it's going to root to 2, then it's going to root to 3, then it's going back to root to 2, then to root to 3, then back to root to 2, then back to root to 3, and so on. It's continuing on the loop. What happens is that a ping from root to 1 to this interface. Now this interface is down, so the ping is going to root to 2. Root to 2 is sending it to root to 3 because it's got a static root there. Root to 3 looks in the routing table, it finds a default root that says anything, I'm going to send it to root to 2. So I send it back to root to 2. Root of 2 says, okay, well, I got a root that says anything for 192.168.12, send it to root of 3. So send it back to the root of 3. And root of 3 is sending it back to root of 2. So that's there you see the loop happening. Okay, um, one thing we can do with the. Uh, let's, let's bring that interface up so no shut down. We can do root of 1, we can use uh, ping. Okay, let's ping again. So ping 192.168.12.1. So now it's working fine because we have enabled the interface. Okay, so if we trace root now, everything should work fine. Right, with the ping, we can do extended ping. So if we want to do the extended ping, we just type ping. And now it's going to ask us a few questions. What is the protocol that we want to ping with? Protocol IP. Target IP address 192.168.12.1. How many repeat count? How many times do you want to send the ping? Five times. Okay, fine. Datagram size, 100. That's fine. Timeout in seconds, two. Yep, that's okay. We take the default. And if we want to continue adding some extended commands, we type Y here for yes. Right? If you type, if you don't type anything, it will just go and ping it. So Y. Now it's asking us, what interface do you want to ping it from? So if we look at the GNS, when you send the ping, it sends from the closest interface, from that interface. We can select this interface to send the ping from to see if this interface can ping. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so interface, uh, yes, yeah, so I can put an IP address, so 192.168.11.1. Type of service, nothing for quality service. Uh, do not fragment bit. Do we want to set them or not? Uh, no. Validate re uh, reply data, no. And the data pattern, leave it. Loose strict record timestamp by verbose. This is very good if you want to see what how the packets are coming, not just going, but what what is the path for them to they coming back. So loose, they can go anyway. Strict, you can choose what the des how, what's the path, and record record is actually the packets the path as they're going, but they're coming back as well. You can notify. It. We don't want to see that now. That's more for your CCIE level. Sweep range of sizes. Uh, we can send, for example, different sizes of, of packets. We can send, uh, for example, uh, 1,400 bytes up to 1,500 bytes and so on, or even more if you want to check it. Uh, nope. And we can see that we have five pings. Okay, so what we're going to do next, I'm going to do another ping very quickly. So I don't want to uh, do this video too long. So ping, extended ping, protocol IP. Yep, target IP address again 192.168.168.12.1 is a fast Ethernet 00 of root 3. Repeat count, um, I want to send one here. Datagram size, fine. Extended command, yes. What I want to send it from is from my fast Ethernet interface. Type of service zero. Set the do not do frag do not fragment. So yes, don't fragment them. And we want to do a sweep. So we want to send from 1450 up to uh, 1550. Sweep maximum size 1550 says wrong. Okay, let's try again. Ping. Uh, target IP address 192.168.12.1. One nine two one six eight dot twelve dot one. Repeat count one. Yes, I want to send them from this one. 
11.1 and yes the sweep yes we want to send it from 1400 say to 1501 okay now what it's going to do is not going to fragment anything and well up to 1501 is fine it should work fine so what we send in here we are actually sending 101 packets okay so you see the last one lost because it could not fragment that it went above, above uh, 1500 okay let's try another one but now let's take a bigger number of pink 192.168.12.1 yep yep interface 192.168.11.1 we want to sweep yep 1400 or 1450 to 15 30 let's go a bit smaller okay oh forgot the do not fra fragment don't fragment bit okay so this is gonna work because it's gonna fragment the, the pieces okay let's stop this what I'm doing ping 192.168.12.1 Yes, the interface is 192.168.12. Uh, sorry, 11.1. Do not fragment. Yep. Yes, we want to sweep from 14.50 to 15.30. Okay. So here we can find out what is the maximum uh, MTU that we can send. For example, well, you will have to count this, but we won't, we won't do that. So you can see that when it reaches 1500, it's actually stopping because we said that, okay, don't fragment them, right? So since it can't fragment these, you can't make it any smaller, it's not going to be able to send them. Okay, I'm going to stop that. So what else can we see here? Okay, the next thing is um, unreachable. Say that we, we send unreachable. We say uh, R2 here, we did um, static root. For anything for this network, we're gonna send it to our neighbor here. Okay, let's remove that, right? So control A to go in front, no. So now it doesn't know how to get to network 192.168.12.0, which is routers three, this network here. So the packets are gonna go up to here. Then router 1 is going to send to router 2, and router 2 is going to turn around and say, oh, I don't know how to send the rest. So go to PCA again, and let's try and ping that. So as you can see, I have uh, information that says destination host unreachable. This is a message coming back from, from, you can see that it's replying from router 2. Okay, now we can do the same. We look at the same at the router 1. So we say ping 192. 168.12. Um, say 200. As you can see, I've got five views. All of them they are telling me unreachable. Okay, this one to stop. Yeah, I can just con control C to break that. Let's continue back in our slides that we finished. Thank you for watching my video. Uh, please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. My name was Astrid Krasnici, helping you to cover this chapter 8 of CCNA Semester 1. Bye-bye.